sit at the table. We sit at your table. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, Summer continues to sing that. Look, just go in right now. Just see the Lord before you. We sit at your table. We sit at your table. David wrote, I set the Lord always before me. Just see him now. We feast on you and we drink you in. We feast on you and we drink you in. Feast on you and we drink you in. You are my bread and wine. Wow. And you always satisfy. You are my bread and wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you always satisfy. You are my bread and wine. And you always satisfy. You are my bread. You've prepared for me. You set the table just for me. You set the table just for me. Just continue to see him. Come, Holy Spirit, right now. I'm telling you, he's here. Everything you need is in him. Be filled, be healed, liberated.
Jesus, be glorified, be pleased, have your way, Holy Spirit. I tell you what, all over this place, why don't you just put your hand on your heart, we're in a real, real sweet spot. Seal it, Lord. Bathe us all in intimacy like never before. A fresh grace, ignite first love. Let us be a people about that table, seated at the table, oh bread and wine. The true vine, bread of life. Even now, liberate people, heal bodies, Jesus. Walk the aisles. Touch each and every one. Freedom. Rose of Sharon. Lily of the Valley. Bright morning star. The Lamb of God. Awesome. 
feather floating right through here. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, you may be seated or stay wherever you want. Sweet Jesus. Hey, how are you? Oh, wow. Uh, we could give it up for Chris and Summer and Tracy. <laughs> My gosh, man. Um, you might have to get the Kleenex again. <laughs> I'm going to be sniffling the whole time. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. How's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, like, get yourself together. <laughs> it is too swirly up here, man. Y'all keep y'all together. I'm going to stay. I'm teasing. <laughs> so intimate. Oh, my gosh, man. You are the bread and wine. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, you all sleep good? A little bit? A little power nap in Jesus' name. <laughs> good morning on the balcony, all you lovelies. How are you? Yeah, so, uh, man, that was so good. This wrecked me, man. Uh, um, so, yeah, I was going to take up an offering, right? What's up, dude? And yeah, just share from my heart a little bit, and um, and uh, we'll see where it will go. I'd love to lay hands on you guys and let the Holy Spirit move, and that'll be awesome. So, what is it today? Sunday. <clears throat> I'm trying to get my yeah. There was another one. Look, can y'all see? Or do I have the good angle in the lights? Man, I remember we were in um, Atlanta when we first moved here. You all didn't know this, but I had just closed on our house. I believe it was a real sign. A dear friend of mine coined that meeting as Uncommon Glory. I don't know. Some of you were then that, that one in Atlanta. Yeah. Not been in, we've been in some nice, interesting meetings, you know. And, um, but that one got out of hand. I, you could feel it shift the room. And, uh, and then I'll, I knew heaven was like taken over when I, this big section in this crowd over here, we're a big ballroom, Hyatt Regency, downtown Atlanta. And everybody starts looking up and they're pointing and I'm like, what about my sermon? <laughs> <laughs> I got my points. And uh, Joseph, what's up, buddy? And uh, look, man, I got to honor my, my pastor Joseph over here. Wave at him, please. He, uh, yeah. A uh, dear friend and, and uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, L listen, love the Lord, and also will cook. Look, next Thanksgiving, we're all going to his house. He can cook. Uh, what, is it Bobby McFlay? Or, or I'm probably Bobby Flay. Or yeah, let's see. I'll jack it all up. I don't know anything about. But, but the TV show, you know, where like the big cooking chef, though, he won that thing on the TV deal. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. I got to, uh, it's been a minute, man, but I took a minister with him uh, some time ago up in Maryland, I believe, yeah, and uh, 
got to eat some of that home cooking lesson. It's the best on the planet. He's got the anointing in it, though, you know. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, they lost the people. They start looking in a swirl of feathers. They start swirling over them this way, which, again, I know that's unique for some. I don't have all the answers for it, but thank the Lord. He just does what he does, and we just love Jesus, you know. But uh, I was like, well, we're here now. Nobody's listening to me, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Then all of a sudden it moved over the middle section and they're all pointing. I don't know why the Lord went left to right and then it hit the right section. And then I think gemstones and things were showing up, but the fear of the Lord came in. You could feel it went from drunken joy, intimacy. You'll feel different. How many of you know the Bible says Jesus has the voice of many waters? I love to liken him to a diamond that you shine a light in. And just depending on which angle you hit it, you get some yellow, some blue, some different hues, you know, of the Lord. And he's so full. So joy we hit. It was great. And then on the dime, it shifted to the fear of the Lord. And I didn't want to touch the mic. I was literally trying to give it to people. I was looking at people. I was like, yeah. they were like, they don't want to touch it. I just want to go crawl in a hole. Uh, in love, though, you know, the fear of the Lord is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's not a, um, you know what I mean? But it is all. It is. It's fear. The word's the word. It's fear. And uh, there was one other meeting actually with a dear friend of ours, Steve Tebb in London. Uh, Chris knows real well it happened. Same thing. It was joy. And the Lord's like, Err. he shifted gears and went fear of the Lord. Body started flying out of seats. I was like, let me find a cave to hide in. And um, anyway, he just does what he does. And, and it's awesome. But listen, I want to say something. I was in uh, Psalm 23 recently with what Summer was singing. And uh, so, so good. Um, but you know, if you look closely, it says, how many of you have been in a bit of a season of resistance and just the enemy, you know, and things like that? Yeah. He loves to play his cards, you know, and, uh, but the, the Lord always has the checkmate at, at hand, you know, he loves the enemy to play his cards. He's like, yeah, those are some great ones. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Checkmate. And, uh, or he's just always got the spades or whatever. But in Psalm 23, it's, it literally, if you read slowly, it says, the Lord prepares a table before me uh, in the presence of my enemies. So if you start reading that, you're like, hold on, there's not a whole lot to worry about here. There's no rush. There's no like, hurry up, enemies here. Let's do a quick microwave, you know, TV dinner. The Lord's like preparing it, you know. <laughs> Joseph would know this real well. He's like, no, no, sit tight, hang tight. He's sitting there spinning a pizza pie crust, you know, <laughs> or whatever you like. The Lord's like, you know, just preparing it. Enemies all around. He's like, you know, I see him. I see him. But listen, wait till you watch what I'm done with when I pull this out of the oven. He is, he is the meal. He's the bread of life. He's the wine. And so I think far too often, like Peter walking on the water, we see the enemies in the storm and we start to sink. But the Lord's like, look, I am the meal. I am the table and he's preparing it in the presence of your enemies. So it's kind of a reverse effect. It's like, man, actually, if that's how it is, bring more enemies. I want them all to see, you know, <laughs> just come on, pull a chair up. You don't get any, but you can watch me and the Lord sitting there just, pew, pew, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's so beautiful, you know, and that's just what oh, I was getting wrecked with, with um, what they were going into. Cause it's literally the Lord's He's like, he does, so you don't, you know, you're not in denial. You know they're there. But when he's the focal point, you just walk on the water through storms. He prepares. He's like, no, he just, take your time. I, I see him too, you know. Kind of like with Elisha, remember, and the, the uh, enemies were coming, and his assistant, he's kind of freaking out or whatever, and, uh, and Elisha's just sitting back drinking lemonade, you know. <laughs> He said, like, no, I see them. He says, way more than, than, you know, with us than are with them. He said, that's kind of funny, actually, that, that they even came with us with that number. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of like thinking, that's, that's light work. And then open the eyes of his servants, and he sees who's with the Lord, you know. And so, um, so, so good. In this hour, we just, you know, sum, sum it up. I was touching on it last night from a different angle, but just need to be people about sitting at his table getting lost in him, partaking of the bread of life in a deep way, the wine of his presence, deepen the word and let the surroundings do what they want to do, you know? And, uh, it's so good. So anyway, um, take up a quick offering. 
Um, yeah, and after today, I get, I'm here. It's awesome. Last time, any of you that were with us, I had to hurry and jump on a plane, but I'm going to get to hang out with you guys. I'll be like normal right over here, signing books too, if you, if you want. I don't know what all we have in the bookstore, but I'll be uh, able to hang out and visit, chat with you guys. And look forward to that tomorrow night. Um, Benjamins, how are you all doing? They were just in this, some of our academy students just in uh, Honduras, just rocked it with the gospel. And uh, it's so, so good. But, um, oh yeah, tomorrow night we'll have class here, School of Faith, Session 5. Um, it'll be a lot of fun if you'd like to join us. And then we'll go on a break. So, okay, on um, the offering, I want to cast a little bit of vision too. And you just pray and see how the Lord would lead you to give. It would be awesome. But also I think it helps as well to see where we're going. Some know this, not all do. But right outside of this building, we have a, um, another, so this building's 11,000 square feet, main sanctuary, uh, bookstore, cafe, nursery, offices upstairs, all this. Another 11,000 square foot building back here, this more of an open shell, our event center. And the, the vision is to finish it out, which numbers are probably around, actually, I was, I was lowballing it. I didn't realize until I started hearing just the AC units over there. There's four big ones are 85 grand. I mean, this is big numbers. Yeah, just to cool it and heat it. Uh, but about a half a million. So who's got a million dollars? <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, but, uh, but I'm excited because the, where the vision's going is it's open with some round, surrounding space uh, we'll, we'll fill it out and hopefully get a CAD drawing to also show you video and all. But what's so exciting about that is we can fit three times the amount of people over there than we can in here. So on these glory nights, I don't know if you guys have noticed, we've been having to cut off registration and we don't take them at the door. And if, if you all were here at Pentecost weekend, we really announced that and had enough time and grand opening and we were jammed in here and there. It was like a big blowout and we just had an overflow screen in there. And, um, so on all the glory nights, big conferences, I'll fly in dear friends, you know, like Michael Miller, Kulianos, Kalinda, different guys, and we'll just go for it. Um, we'll be able to pack out over in there, spread out. It'll be awesome and um, not have to shut down registration. Plus, and then in our church community and academy, we'll still be able to function in here. And it's going to be awesome, kind of a hybrid layout. Um, but all that being said, it takes numbers. Oh, yeah, also this field will ultimately turn into an extended parking lot. So you don't have to park under the trees by the deer and all this stuff. And so we used that during Pentecost week, and that field was full as well. I wanted a bass pond. You all know that, but we've got to use it for the kingdom. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get one in heaven or something like that. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, all that takes, you know, pretty sizable amount of money. So if the Lord would lead you, I know practically a lot of people are into year-end giving and it helps. We're a true nonprofit, 501c3, tax deductible and all that stuff. And I and, uh, just want to pray with you and as you feel led. I love in, I think, Proverbs 11, verse 25, it says, there's different versions that say it different ways, but more or less it says, the generous or he who scatters seed always ends up more prosperous. But then the stingy, y'all want to be the stingy half and I'll do the, I'm teasing. <laughs> when I do the uh, foolish and wise virgins, I know we split the clerk of the crowd. They're like, no, they're the foolish virgins and cause division in the camp. And, but uh, the stingy, it says they withhold and it only leads to even more uh, poverty. Isn't that interesting? The kingdom's totally backwards. And so it's a beautiful thing to live in generosity as well. Um, we, I teach it to my children. It's just what you do. It's awesome. You start to realize, like, oh, my gosh, God's in this whole thing anyway. Any provision I ever have. How many of you are believers in here? <laughs> okay, I'm about the altar call up in here for you lazy ones. Anyway, uh, if you're a believer, we're in a different covenant. He is our shepherd. He, he provides. You have nothing to do with it. If you're not a believer, good luck. You better work hard and figure something out. But we're under a different covenant, and that being said, you start to realize, like, oh, all provision is from him anyway. And if he finds a giving generous vessel, he'll just dump more. He's like, oh, I can trust them. And their, their motives and heart is pure. 
And so I teach my children as well, like Judah the other day. Um, he even went to get a haircut somewhere. And uh, Zoe drove him. So he has his license. He's just not bold enough yet. He's still like, <laughs> he's getting there. And uh, some of y'all will be thankful that live here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's pretty good, but um, but yeah, this this lady it cut his hair and he tipped her big time, almost as much as the. I'm like, come on, man, good boy. You know, what I mean? that's what you do. You just you bless and you live life. And, and so, just in in as a typical rule of thumb, anyway, you want to live a life of generosity and and um, yeah, I just want to leave you with that. Proverbs 11:25. Also, those of you that want to start tithing, if you consider this your house, feel free. If you go to a different church, we encourage you, you want to tithe there, you know, where you're truly being fed on a consistent basis. And here pretty quick uh, when we announce the church name to it. So we'll still be Bridal Glory International, kind of the umbrella of it all. Nothing will change. Uh, but the church name will take on its name that's really the same meaning, just simple and more practical. Um, we'll announce that here pretty quick. Kind of like if you guys saw how Christ for All Nations and then this Nations Church, it's just the same thing. But practical reasons, and um, you guys will appreciate it, trust me, that attend here, because I've paid the price of trying to explain Bridal Glory International. You know, where do you go to church? Bridal Glory International Church? By then they're like falling asleep. You're like, Bridal Glory International. Yeah. You know. And then also, but I love it because it, I've used it now as a conversation piece. I'll spin it back to the bride, and, and, uh, and it's awesome, too, in which we still will be. Checks made payable the same way. All that will be the same. But, um, you know, it's just awesome. You get some interesting conversations. Oh, but when we announce that, too, I think at the same time, we're going to get with our team and all, but the website will be up, and, and there will also be the ability online to, to give and, um, you know, tithe and all that stuff. So, so let's pray. And... Um, Maybe the offering baskets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's, you can text to give. Look, we got the triple ones in our text to give. Come on, Jesus. Jeremiah 111. You know, prophetic people, they just find reasons to make numbers work. You know what I mean? For the scripture. I, I think the Lord loves it. He's like, yeah, let's do it. I'll breathe on it, you know. But Jeremiah 111 says the Lord's looking over his promises to fill, fulfill them rapidly. So, um, yeah, but text to give, made checks payable to Bridal Glory International. Um, cash, rings, watches, whatever. <laughs> ta- a good Rolex will pay off one of them uh, AC units over there. <laughs> I'm teasing. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your beautiful body. God, thank you for the men and women of God, even now. And just receive by faith, guys. We're in a school of faith right now, and it just feels high. But right now, I release and speak. I decree over you the, the blessing of God, even in their generosity this morning, the favor of God, as, as some are saying, your face shining upon them. I pray that you'd bathe their feet in butter. Even many of you um, listening online or maybe later in, on YouTube, Job 29.6, that you'd bathe their feet in butter. There would be a great acceleration and ease that would come upon their life. And you'd fill their storehouses. Blessing, prosperity, abundance. You are the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Be glorified. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> awesome. You can come give. We've got the two gray baskets up here. <clears throat> and dispose of my, my um, Kleenexes. Zoe, Zoe, do you mind getting my Kleenexes? Eddie, what's up, Jonathan? How are y'all doing? Sometimes when I'm back here in the lights, and, but no, I can see you. Y'all been good? Awesome. Thanks, babe. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay.
so I, I saw a few things. Um, uh, prophetically, I, I want to release first, if that's okay, and at the end, we'll have our, our prayer team up, if, that's, if, if you guys don't mind, and love to pray for you all. I'll be here as well. And, um, but remember, if it lands at the end, we'll make time for prayer. I'm going to jump in the Word for a little bit, and um, we'll go from there. Um, but I saw, and you guys get the prophetic, I saw a leaf. Um, you know, leaves have two halves to them, like the main stem up the middle and then the two matching halves. You guys see a feather back there? Come on, middle section, glory. So the generous was in the middle section. How <laughs> decent, how <laughs> decent. <laughs> I'm totally glad. Yeah, if the lights are right, you can see them. Yeah, y'all see them? Come on, Jesus. It'll start swirling and getting out of hand. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Do what you want to do, Lord. And so... um. Uh, but I saw a leaf, um, and, and the left side of it had a, a, a hole in it. Don't raise your hand on this one, but I, I knew right away when I saw it, there's somebody in a relationship, it could be a spouse, where one half, uh, there's like a void, a, a hurt, a hole in your heart, and um, just amending the Lord wants to do. You know, how many of you know He is your all-sufficient need in everything? I think far too often, even as spouses, we want the other to fulfill our needs, and that's not biblical. Your, your helpmates, but only he can fulfill, you know. I remember we were preaching in, uh, where were we? Oh, El Salvador. Yeah, a lot of you all were with us, and, and we got invited to this gang. I won't say their name, but they're one of the dangerous, most dangerous in the world. And, and so um, anyway, we're, we're, but we got invited back to what they call their colony. And uh, they don't really call them hoods. They call them colonies. And, so we're in a rough area preaching all week anyway, El Salvador. And um, Ryan, were you on that one? You weren't on that one? Yeah. And, uh, and so it was amazing we even got to go in there. And um, our paid government guards, we're talking semi-automatics with us all week. Jocelyn, I remember you were there. She, she had a word of knowledge and for one of them. Um, they're with us the whole week, paid government, I mean, security. And we get about a mile out from the colony, and they just pull off the road. They wouldn't go with us anymore. I was like, oh, boy, this is for real. Like, we paid y'all. And, uh, but you knew that I didn't want any riff with them. So uh, we just, oh, I told the team, I said, look, you better hear the Lord. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I can tell you. Now I was in my hotel room going, I hope I'm hearing the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm like, sweet Jesus, all I can see is bridal glory on the America headline paper. And... Uh, so uh, some stayed back, you know, which is great. I'm like, man, to each his own, everybody, and whatever faith you got. And so we, we pull up, uh, turn on the block. I'm at the front of the bus. I'm like, here us gringos looking like million-dollar bills going back here. I say, this is not good. And uh, one of them hops on the bus, street named Snow. I'm like, great. We don't get real names. <laughs> and uh, he's scanning us. I'm scanning him. I'm trying to feel him out. Just here by the Spirit. Don't get nothing. And we go back there, and... Uh, they, they're organized, this group. They, um, they're very organized. They weren't just trying to you know, sell an eight ball on a block and make some money. They ran this joint. And so uh, they had like, watch out, man, earpieces, all this. So we get back, and we have to rush off the bus into the, this like, concrete block room to preach the gospel to them. And, but I, was remi- I didn't mean to go here, but I was reminded because uh, it's hard to preach sometimes to you know, people that there's not a lot of reference. I mean, these are hardened, I mean, at the top... So I, rem- I just remember just preaching. There's a hole in every man's heart that only God can fill. There's a void you all have. And, um, and just commended them on their loyalty. I didn't have a lot to work with. I'm like, you know, <laughs> it was some of the most wicked, you know. And, uh, but they're very loyal when they're in that group. And so right in the middle of preaching, I get up, and they all whip out their phones, and they're video recording me. And, but then when I would sit down in the Spanish speaking, they would just drop their phones. They didn't care. And I was like, why are they videoing me, you know? And, I later found out they bring the video to their head guys, and they just to check you out. If you have any tie-in back then, if you had any connection to Trump or anything, they'll, they'll find you. They, they hate, you know. So I was like, but that's amazing. The gospel went to the leaders. That's all I was thinking. I'm like, sweet. And uh, so I remember preaching. There's a hole in your heart. Right in the middle of preaching, they all, I hear pedos, pedos, like in their mics, and they're, t- they're telling each other on little walkie-talkies that their dogs is... <laughs> Where's Demacia? Is it pedos dogs? P- 
Peros. Dogs. Peros. Yeah, she's like, yeah, you're saying it We're way wrong. I don't know what you... She, she's like, no, that's not dogs. <laughs> that's awesome. You saw how confused she looked? Oh, that's great. That tells you a lot, man. I've been going to Central and South America for years, and I still can't. That's bad. Anyway, so they said dogs in Spanish, okay, and, and, uh, and they took off in the woods. I was like, what is going on? Right in the middle of the sermon, and I knew, I was like, something's alarming. So I kid you not, oh, great man of faith, I'm sitting there, our whole team, I'm, I'm looking at the piece of concrete, I'm going to lay down if I hear bullets start flying. This is, I'm thinking logic, you know, bullets flying, the lower you get, you know, phew, less chances. I'm literally, I'm sitting there going, yep, that's right, where I'm going to lay when I hear the first bullet. And... Uh, Thank the Lord they didn't go off. And, uh, and, but yes, yeah, so, but the Lord moved. It was really great. Touched them. And they came back. Oh, they have watchdogs they set in the woods. So if the opposing rival gang comes and doesn't, their dogs don't recognize them, it's kind of like Bullseye with the Amazon guy at our house. <laughs> Same thing. So it destroyed our blinds the other day, man. Just destroyed them. So, uh, or the, the government officials, they'll go off. They're their watchdogs, you know. And they came back and, we ministered to them, gave them groceries, all this stuff. And so the next day, I'm on what would be the equivalent to like Good Morning America. It was a nationwide live television in El Salvador, right? And so secular, full out. The guy that's interviewing me is homosexual. He runs the whole thing. So I'm sitting there in lights, camera, live. You don't have room for like q and You know, you can't like you're, you're, you're on. So I've got our interpreter we're going through, and I hear him say the name of the gang. He's like, what are y'all doing here? Why would y'all, you know, just, and I'm, I'm having to use, you know, calculated vernacular because I want a secular thing, but he, he set himself up. It was awesome. He goes, um, I hear da 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 and he names the gang. And I was like, oh, this, this can't be good. So I'm waiting for my interpreter, and he, he says, yeah, he asked you how their nation's really known for this gang. Have you had any run-ins with them? And I'm going, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> I'm like, because they watch you. They're, you know, they're videoing me, and it's a secretive thing that we even got in. And, but yet we're also ministering to the government. Um, I think who was the governor at the time is now the president. I don't know if you all knew that. Yeah, we prayed for him. He got elected. He's a Christian man. President, yes, yeah, awesome. So we're trying, you just, you don't care. You just want to touch people with the kingdom. You know, it doesn't matter. Cancer, AIDS, wards, it doesn't matter. And so, uh, so I'm sitting there going, this is where the Holy Spirit will give you what to say in the moment. So I'm sitting there, lights, camera, I'm looking at Andy. You all remember Andy, and he's not giving me nothing to work with. I was hoping he'd be like, uh-uh, you know, something like this. He's just going, I, I'm like, Andy, bro. So I was like, this doesn't feel right, you know, because it's a great testimony, but I'm like, nah, it's real secretive. So I go, I just totally averted the, the question. I go, it's such an honor to be in El Salvador. I tell you, yesterday we were at a cancer ward. You know, I just totally just went around it. And, um, and I began to tell him how we saw a tumor disappear. I was like, man, he, now he's live. We're on live. He can't shut this down. So we tiptoed. Then I was like, he kind of asked. And I averted. And then I started just talking about full up miracles on like a live secular deal. You know, uh, tumors dissolve and all this. And I didn't know I was going to go there. But... The, uh, the hole in the heart is how I was hitting them. And uh, I believe there's somebody on the other half of a relationship really, really hurting, you know, in a deep way. The Lord wants to mend that and touch you. Um, I saw, don't raise your hand on this one, um, just simply put, somebody's lost their fire, that first love. And the atmosphere is honestly already like this morning. They rekindle it, you know, in such a beautiful way. Me and Brent were talking on the way here. Got a Bojangles biscuit, man. It just, <laughs> we just broke a fast. I'm like, we don't need to stay healthy right now. It was glorious. So we're pounding this Cajun filet. I ate one half of the biscuit. You got to keep the carbs low. And we're talking about um, just right now in this hour, you know, um, how important it is, you know. The, the Bible says the first and second commandment, basically the law and the prophets hang on them. And I really feel the Lord simplifying things in this hour. He's getting us back to first quality love with him. Really just simplify if you have to. I'm kind of already bent this way. If I get too much going, I'm not like a good multitasker. I can do certain things well, but you get too much going. And that's how the Christian life is often. If we're not careful, that Martha spirit starts taking over. And we miss that first thing well that matters most that everything else hangs on. And, uh, and the second one, loving your neighbor. The community, you know, the lost, of, of course, as well. But I really feel in this hour like never before, the Lord's emphasizing, come back to him. 
simplify, don't make it complicated. Love him really, really well with all of your ability. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And your neighbor, which is community, getting a community right now in this deep, wherever the Lord's calling you, however it looks, but uh, going in deep right now. And, uh, and so that first love, sometimes, how many of you know, just somebody that's on fire near you will help keep yours lit. And then, and then you go back to the secret place, keep yours lit, and you just, you run together. You make mistakes, no worries, I made that one last week. Just get up, let's get up and keep going. You know, just love people, we need each other. And I love that the Lord set this whole thing up really in love. Love for him, love for one another. And you pull either two of those ingredients out of the recipe and it's, it's going to uh, fail. You know? But when they're in there and they're in there strong, um, it works. Um, I saw the scene where Elijah uh, heard the voice of God in the still small voice. And just want to encourage you, I feel like that's some, for somebody here, um, that you may be looking for the big wow, the big earthquake that God's going to do, or the big wind or fire, or whatever it may be. But sometimes the most critical things we need to hear are in that still small voice and being still. So Psalm 46, 10 says, be still and know that he is God. So I just want to encourage you, sometimes we're waiting for the big thing, and the Lord's like, I'm not in any of that right now. Sometimes he is, and it's awesome. Sometimes it's the sound of a rushing mighty wind, tongues of fire. But sometimes it's getting still and, uh, until he speaks. Um, another one, um, don't raise your hand on this one, sorry, I don't know why they're all these, but they're good. Uh, <laughs> the other ones, you know, anyway. I saw uh, those little pill boxes. Actually, there were six cubes in it with a lot of pills somebody's on. And I think the Lord wants to set you free. Real simple, yeah. So um, you can raise your hand, but I just, the way I'm bent, I don't want to, you know, we're not trying to highlight that. But just want to let you know in a moment, listen, the anointing breaks the yoke in an instant. I don't care what the issue is. We've seen too much now, you know. And, uh, and it's him. It has nothing to do with us. But I believe you could be totally set free. Think about the money you can save, too, on the <laughs> vitamins or whatever they are. No, vitamins are good. I, I think it's pills. It was a six-cube p- pill box. Also saw one of those uh, inhalers with um, whatever they are. You, you got to, you know, you squeeze them. And, and so anybody with breathing or something to do with breathing, I think the Lord wants to breathe life into your lungs. It totally sets you free. You be healed. So please remember those for later, and uh, we'd love to pray with you, and, and it's going to be good. Okay, I want to read. Uh, I, I'm not going to really um, talk on this a, a whole lot. It'll be kind of like a hybrid message, if you will, but I, I just want to emphasize real quick Isaiah 60, um, and then jump to more of an exhortation, and be honestly a little bit more pastoral from Exodus 23. But Isaiah 60 From last night, I should have known, like last night's message should be like a four-week series. There's just so much there, and I was trying to give a a broad, just drop it in one thing. It's just kind of hard, but I do want to just at least touch on this. So you guys remember last night I was was emphasizing, um, in this hour, simply put, we need to live as ascended ones. And you see, it's like ironic that Moses and Elijah are like the last two models that are emphasized, highlighted before the Lord's return. And the common thread sewn into the fabric of Elijah, Moses, and Jesus is they all lived ascended lives, meaning disconnected from that which is low. You see the the clear distinction in Revelation where he says, mark out the temple, those who worship there, and outside, don't don't even acknowledge it, you know, in that way. It's going to be clear darkness, clear light. And that's where these days are heading. I touched on it last night. It's like if these prophets, these two witnesses, are needing to prophesy calling fire down and calling for droughts, Elijah did that with Ahab and Ahaziah, the two most wicked, more, nice, more, um, they were the most wicked ever, the Bible says, than any before them. So that shows you where leadership is going. I just want to encourage you guys, now's not the time to start putting all your chips in the... I'm just, I'm not trying to step on toes, please hear me. Because I I guarantee you we're probably on the same page. But now's not the time to start putting all your chips in the basket of like government and stuff like that. Love it, vote, man, pray, get me, I'm I'm for it. But I'm just telling you, the Bible is super clear. There's some things are just, they're going where they're going. And the Bible is real clear. The end time opposing leadership of darkness against light, and you see it in Isaiah 60, deep darkness covers the earth. While we emphasize light and glory, it's just going that way. So there'd be these Ahab, Ahaziah type leadership that's being opposed by glory bombs. 
And we're going to see that our light, if it shines so bright, I believe some of the greatest harvest will be them running to the light. We'll go into darkness still. We totally do. Go into the highways and the byways. But also you're going to be brining, uh, uh, shining so bright. Brining. That's shining and bright. Uh, <laughs> Holy Ghost gives me creative words. No, I'm too. Uh, but it's like a city on a hill and that can't not be seen. And I think there's going to be people steeped in darkness, deep darkness, that are just like, hold on, what's that light over there? I need that. Like those flies at the light machine, they can't, they're so drawn in. And, um, and you see it again emphasized in Isaiah 60. So this need, simply put on this hour, to live ascended lives, again, by the principles of how we set ourselves up. I don't mean be a monk and don't touch society. You don't love your family, your neighbors. You, you guys hear me. But how we live, like Elijah and Moses, they knew something about it. They lived ascended where it's, it's the secret place of the Most High. It's just you and him up there. Jesus wouldn't even let nine more of the disciples come up there with him. It was just Peter, James, and John. A very secluded crowd, crowd lives up there. And it's where the voice of God's super clear. The blurry obscurities and unbelief of the world they have no connection on you. The bride lives ascended. They literally would, there's recorded, um, again, this may be a little out there for some, but I just love it, and I see it in the Bible. But some old mystics and saints, they lived so in tune with the Lord in such a deep way intimately, there were some, you just begin to mention the name of Jesus, and they'd float off the ground. Because they were so, I believe, they would call it, literally, they had a term for it, it's called miracles of ascension. There's this man, Joseph of Cupertino. Actually, the Apple, Apple is the headquarter there. It's named after him. People don't know this, but his name, California, listen, there's a heritage over there. Los Angeles, City of Angels, San Diego, um, San Francisco. Yeah, that's after St. Francis of Assisi. Oh, sorry, he was a stigmatist, literally. Whoa. You just read up a little, and, and it's in the Bible. Galatians 6, 17, Paul says, don't do me any harm. Listen to me. I, I am branded by the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people think that's from persecution, but he says the marks of the Lord Jesus. St. Francis, he went in, I didn't even know I was going to go here, but went into a 40-day fast, and he, he saw the Lord in his sufferings and resurrection, and whew, the marks got branded. It's recorded. He, it's called uh, stigmata. It just means to be marked by the Lord. And uh, it was known. He had the physical markings of the Lord for a season and a time. But Joseph of Cupertino, they literally called him the flying friar because he, he would just float up off the ground and, and get lost in the glory of God. You begin to just talk about the Lord, and they were documented, uh, recorded happenings of people that lived in that bridal realm. And I believe it was a sign. They called it the miracles of ascension, but I believe it was a sign of just living ascended in him. The Bible says when he returns, we'll be caught in the sky with him. And there's no attachment down here. We're here, but we're not here. And, um, and again, you see Jesus in Acts 1-9 ascend. Peter, defy gravity, walks on water. Elijah ascend. So just for biblical reference. But um, anyway, in this last hour, though, that we'd be a people so detached. Listen, who cares if you're relevant? The glory of God is relevant. It's the light that's going to attract them, I'm telling you. We, we just, I'm telling you, hang up the the strategies and the trying to do this. And I get some of it's valid. You, you guys, please hear me in balance. But people that are so bathed in the oil of his presence, in his voice, they partake of rich, the rich bread of life, Jesus Christ, every day. They're just different. They shine. People see them. They're like, there's something really different about them. I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't even like the way they dress. <laughs> the, don't even like their lingo, but there's something about them. I'm really drawn to them. I, I can, they have something I, have, I don't have, you know, and um, they live ascended and they shine. Stephen was that way. They said his face shone like an angel. He's like, I see the Lord. Rocks are literally flying through the air. Pow, the size of softballs. Too. He's like, Jesus, he's, he's caught up on him. He didn't, he's not even down here. Forgive him, Lord, as before he gets caught up. And so living this ascended life, simply put, deep, deep in the word, deep in his presence, um, impacting society, but you, it's, it's a different level. It's a different company. And Moses and Elijah knew this. They lived really high. So watch, you can see it even in Isaiah 60. We know this passage is referring to the future glory of Israel. But um, watch this. It says, arise and shine. Remember Moses arose. He, he ascended the hill of the Lord. And guess what happened? He shone. 
Matthew 17, Jesus arose, went to the top of the mountain and shined. Remember that? For your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. If you do a word study there, that literally means the glory of God actually from within comes out and is upon you. That's what happened to Moses because the kingdom of heaven, especially in the new covenant, is within. So the glory of God begins to exude. It comes out of us and rests upon us, and you shine. And that's what I believe happened to Jesus. The Bible says he, he went up, you know, after six days, Matthew 17, began to jump in prayer. And it says, first, his face shone like the sun. First, from intimacy. Some are saying that your face shine upon our face. And then the progression is his clothes begin to shine like the, the light of the sun. And it produces purity. There's so much there. It's a whole other teaching. But we need a people that are rising, living ascended, and shining. And we need the glory of God to rise upon us and be seen upon us. Why? Not so we can be like, yeah, got my ministry name now. You know what I mean? Got my new book that'll sell whatever. No, so he can be glorified. Moses knew this. He was like, if your glory doesn't go with us, psh, I'm good. I'll go back to doing sheep or something. Because uh, we are helpless without your manifest glory. We need people carrying the glory of God. And so I love this because Isaiah 6, he says, arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Here's the difference now that the gray area is leaving. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Okay, that's not just, that's deep, deep darkness. And so, I, again, we don't highlight this, emphasize it, whatever, but also the Bible is the Bible, and I love the full counsel of God. You know, we shouldn't be naive. So where things are going to go more and more with the world in its way is, is darkness and deep darkness the people. Uh, we're going to begin to see it, you know, because I think some, there's some theology out there that's, I love it, man. If it were true, great. It's just not always in the Bible, but that everything's just going to turn back in the whole, you know, and it is for God's people. But basically, you're going to have people starting to shine so blindingly light full of glory, and then people, they're going to keep going deeper into darkness. That's in deep darkness. That's why Revelation 11 says, look, now mark this company. And this company is going to do what they're going to do. And they're all going to go head to head for months. 42 months. They only get 42 highlights. <laughs> Every day they get a prophetic highlight. And um, Julia loved that. <laughs> she said, yes. And, uh, but this deep darkness, listen, Matthew 24, Jesus says, to kick off the greatest parameter of all scriptural emphasis on the end times, the very first thing he says, he says, take heed, lest you be deceived. Meaning deception, all-time high. I'm talking about an anointing of deception is hitting the earth and going to ever increase. Well, we can pray and shift it. Yes, we can. Keep doing it. Listen, don't mishear me. We do that. Intercede, fast pray. Touch the lost, this, that, and other. But there is a group. They're going to keep going that way, full-out deception. And you can see it now. Certain things I hear about, I'm usually way late to it because we're just so disconnected. But I'm like, how do people even make that up? Like, how do you think like that? It seems so obvious, but there's a... a a real spirit of deception. And so deep darkness is going to uh, cover the people. And that's why we've got to go deep, blinding light, you know. Um, I'll never forget a fun story I love to tell. And uh, I don't know if I'll get to the ex exhortation. We'll see. Are you guys super hungry here? Yeah. Oh, oh, y'all are talking spiritually. I, was, I, was, I, meant, I meant, do you need to go back and eat? Okay, good. We'll see where we go. <laughs> They're like, yes, Lord. More word. That's funny. I, 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 was, I meant like lunch. I didn't want to keep you. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so anyway, yeah, yeah. But so uh, I was in uh, uh, India uh, years ago, you know, and uh, had we talked about this? I'd been to Vishka Patnam. Do you all know where that is? Yeah. So you fly into Hyderabad and we were down there preaching. And, um, and I love to tell the story because to date, this precious young girl, 11 years old, she had the strongest demon I've ever come up against. In Columbia, we've seen some solid ones, probably number two and number three place there. But, um, you know, I just, I think we need not be naive. Like where the world's going, there's going to be deep, deep darkness. And I'm talking about deception like we've never seen, possession like we've never seen. And it's going to take some heavy, glory, hard hitters with the anointing, pure, living pure and set apart. In true love, not arrogant, full of humility, you know, full of the character of the Lord. And, and so uh, here we are, we're preaching in India, 
just rigorous schedule all week with this uh, Pastor Moses staying at their house. It was awesome. And we go to this one hut, and uh, the, uh, the anointing really hit. The presence of God just really hit in this hut. It was just got rich. So I was going around laying hands on people. And um, this, I come across this precious little girl. I later found out she's 11 years old. I mean, just skinny as can be, petite little, beautiful little Indian girl. She had the ink stuff that they do all over her. Um, what is it? Henna. Okay, yeah, it was beautiful. Unless, is that not spiritually good or something? That may have been why she had the demons. I don't know, but I thought it looked good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but it's just beautiful. So she's sitting there, and uh, we're coming through. Everything looks fine until heaven hits, you know. Man, I was in Dominican Republic when I was with Eric, and it got, anyway. Uh, but on this one, all I did, touch her on the forehead, and there it went, man. Lost her eyes, went back. I've got two grown men with me. And back then, I, you know, I still work out, but we just been, I know we just got off a of fast. You know, I was bigger. I work out. I'm not, you know, I'm not weak or anything. And so two grown men, she's manhandling us. 11-year-old girl. My mind's going, what is happening right now? I'm like, in Jesus' name, trying to cast this devil out. Rastaba, every tongue I knew. <laughs> and then repeat. And... Uh, and somebody had a camera. They had it on video. It was bananas. I've never since. And uh, I'm sitting here mentally going, "How I warm up with her in the gym. You understand? Like, she's lightweight, and she's manhandling. Like, me and, um, you know, the Bible talks about these demons that break chains and stuff. That's when those verses start to make sense. And um, so we're, she's, we're literally getting kind of thrown around or moving around the hut. And I'm like, in Jesus' name, we're going. In, in that region, they spoke uh, Telugu and Hindi. Do you all, oh, both? Oh, no way. That's amazing. I wish I had you all there. I think the anointing would have been more. Uh, so I'm going through interpreter in Telugu, Hindi. The devil's like, nah. So finally, the demon, you know, sometimes they play possum and they kind of lay out. And I was like, thank you, Lord. I need to break. I knew the demon was still in her, but I'm, she was just acting asleep. But I was like, nah. So I'm thinking, praise the Lord. I, whew, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm serious. I wish I could have been like, now, you know, it didn't happen like that. So, uh, and the poor girl, she's, you know, she's not there. We, we could never get her back. And, and uh, so this precious old lady, she has some water. She felt sorry for the young girl because she was sweating. Her hair was all over the place. And she starts flicking water in her face to cool her off, stir the devil back up. Yeah. I'm like, lady, kill the water. We need a break, you know. And, uh. So finally, uh, whatever, we finally did right. It was the, all the Lord, but she got totally free. She went and just limp like a noodle and held her, and she was totally free. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And um, we came back through, I think, their village. No, that night I get to Pastor Moses' house. This is just this is funny. He's, oh, Brother Brian, he would call me. Brother Brian, uh, I know this girl. He goes, I know of her. When her demon manifests in her village... Sometimes it takes up to 50 people to contain her. You know, I was like, Moses, thanks for nothing. <laughs> you, told, you should have told me that before, you know. I probably would have never laid hands on her. No, I'm teasing. I would have. But, but he knew. I was like, man, now you tell me. So, um, but we went back a couple days. We hit her village, and she was just lost in worship. So I had the ink stuff, and yeah, lost in the glory. So good. Yeah. But, um, but you know, that... that Help me remember because that was that was deep darkness um, on a level that you know you don't see too often. But I think, in, like I'm saying, in this earth, we're going to see an increase. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 of deep darkness hitting the people, and this collision you see in Revelation 11. Our our wrestle we know is not against flesh and blood; it's against principalities and powers. And really, the highest vantage point of warfare is loving Jesus. I'm telling you, I found it. There's there's a place you can fly in Him. Again, I'm for the rebuking and binding and all, but sometimes we get so caught up around here and we get our eyes off of him. And uh, anyway, but that we'd be a people that are living at an ascended uh, level, you know, a place of ascension like never before, so deep in him that our light is shining so, so pure and bright and that the glory of God, of God is literally resting upon us. And then, you know, heaven just comes. And watch this. His glory will be seen uh, upon you. And, and listen to this right here. The Gentiles shall come to your light. 
and kings to the brightness of your shining. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, I may be able to do that exhortation fast. I don't know. But, um, but right now in this hour that we live so ascended and full, full of bright light, the light of, of God in his presence and word, and I believe one of the greatest harvests we're going to see is them running to your light. You know, um, there's many people, if we're honest, I was just on the phone with Todd last night. He had called in the middle of the deal, so I called him back. And listen, between him and Ben Fitzgerald, they're, one, they're some of the baddest one-on-one evangelists in the streets. You cannot win. They, they will get you. And some people, if we're honest, aren't all, their graces are different, right? You know, let's just be honest. Sometimes I feel like I'm, one time I was on a plane up by a businessman. Up, I had upgraded up front, and this businessman from New Jersey, by the end of it, he's trying to convert me over to his thing. I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to preach to you. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I'm telling you, just think about it. By the time we finish, you know, I'm like, that didn't go anywhere. And so sometimes I need the fish to, like, jump in the boat, you know. And so to encourage you, walk in what grace you're at, but also may we all live so ascended in that bright light, I'm telling you. You're just, uh, Kristen, she, the other day, one of our um, academy students, she's amazing, been with us for years. You were in the cafe, I think. You had just said hi to somebody, drunkenness hit them. Uh, was it a, a, a coffee line? Starbucks, yeah. She came out of rich presence. They didn't know it. These two ladies just sitting there, normal as day, and all they did was look at her. And joy hit them. They started laughing uncontrollably. They didn't know what was going on. I think same day, you, uh, somebody got healed in the store. Yeah. Hold on, let's get our microphone. This would be awesome. You've got the white mic, and I'll land it. This would be good. So good. But you see, it's like as you go, you know. That's another thing. Like this end time hour, it's not the pulpit people. Trust me, I'm convinced many of you are going to like have way more rewards. We just end up being here at times. But, Kristen, yeah, tell them, tell them both stories, please. It would be awesome. Okay. Well, the night before, um, we were in... Arkansas? You can stand up so they can see you. Um, I forget where we were. Oh, Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit smashed it. Yeah. Yeah, so we were still in that. I was in that glory for yeah. the night before. Yeah, yeah we, we preached on dill pickles, the being <laughs> baptized so in the Spirit. <laughs> it just went there. Like, I think I floated home. And then, uh, so I went to the store, and I went to get coffee prior. And then uh, I just walked in, and I stood next to these ladies I love. And I was like, you know. They just start, ah, and I'm like, what did I do? And I just, we just start all laughing, and then um, we just kind of like, bye, ha, ah, like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Joy had smashed the yeah. night before, yeah. I, I didn't, under, like, that's never happened, so I didn't know what to do with it. I, I should have told him about Jesus, but I was just like, ah. <laughs> Yeah. And then I went to Publix, and when I got done unloading my car, this girl with a crutch, and she, I think, just had back surgery or something. She was moving real slow, and she's like, can I have your basket? I'm like, yeah, and she came over to me, and I, I was just like, can I pray for you? I mean, I, I knew she was um, hurting, and then she said, I just got back from a church service, and I was asking God if he would heal me. Mm. She's like, I know wow. he'll heal me. I'm like, well, we'll still do it right now. And so, you know, I, I laid hands on her back, and she just started, like, tears started coming out, and she's like, mm. I know it's still there, but my pain is leaving. My pain is Come leaving. On, He's Jesus. taking my pain, and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on, Jesus. So good. Thank you for sharing it. Sorry to put you on the spot. She's been on crusades with us, seen the leg grows out, I mean, grow out and everything. Is Tommy here? Is he in the back? Man, I would love for Tommy, if he hears me, to come share. Listen, he had an awesome one at the gym recently. <laughs> you would love if Tommy can, he may be watching the, the kids. But um, So anyway, just living, you guys get it, you know. Um, ascended, blinding light uh, company, detached. He's coming? Oh, this will be this will bless you guys, Tommy. Uh, Tommy, bro, do, sorry to put you on the spot. Do you mind sharing what happened at the gym the other day? They'll love it. It's glorious. Okay, first off, you can tell he's no small figure. Okay, he dominates the gym realm, and this was awesome. This is so good. Share with him, dude. This is hilarious. So um, I was working out, and I'm not the kind of guy that really socializes a lot in the gym. I'm kind of in my zone. So, anyways. Um, Somebody kind of flags me down. I've got my headphones in, and he's like, hey, man, what playlist are you listening to? You're going crazy in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even think about it. I just grabbed my phone, and I said, 
Oh, well, it's, it's Love Note by Upper Room. <laughs> <laughs> and th this guy looked at me like I had three heads <laughs> and just turned around and was like, all right, man, you just... <laughs> You, you keep doing that. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Appreciate it, man. Give it up. <laughs> I love that story, man. <laughs> Tommy's so swole, he's benching probably every weight in there, and the guy's like, what are you doing? Oh, that's a love note. <laughs> that's awesome. But see, he's one of those blinding light ones out there, you know? So, yeah, we would just live that way, and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and stand. I, I think if I um, open up the, the next one, it may, may take a minute, but, um, but yeah, that we'd be a, a city on top of a hill. You, know, you see it all throughout Scripture, arise, shine. Moses and Jesus ascended and lit up like light bulbs, and... and uh, that we'd give him glory in the earth. <clears throat> so yeah, again, to recap, um, the hole in the heart, and, and if there's a physical issue with the heart, you know, um, jump in as well, but, but really emotional in a relationship thing, um, lost first love, needing to hear the still small voice of God over the big wow. Sometimes the most transitional destiny shifts for me have been in that still small voice. I want to encourage you guys. Sometimes I think we feel that it's, if it's such a big thing that we're praying about, that we've got to hear it in a big way. Does that make sense to you guys? But however God speaks is the biggest way. And sometimes it's that still small. Um, uh, med medicine, somebody's on a lot of medicines, the Lord wants to set you free of, and the breathing thing. Um, I don't know what that is, but uh, what's, the, what's that? Nebulizer? Okay. Is that what they're called? Inhaler. Inhaler. Yep. And so the Lord wants to set you free of uh, breathing. And so, yeah, if you don't mind, we can just jump into some worship and we'll pray. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> 